think I want to be a writer. Yeah? Dad's a writer, right? Ha. What makes you think that? This is right here. It says, work on my novel is going well. I shall soon win the Nobel Prize for both storytelling and poetry. No fear. You know where that letter was written from? Prison. Mm-hmm. Why is he in prison again? Interstate transportation of stolen securities. What's that? He cashed forged checks. It's a true story based on Nick Flynn's memoir. And um, Nick, growing up, didn't know his father, Jonathan Flynn. He would just get letters from him, sometimes from prison. Um, uh, this sort of like mythological figure who, uh, played by Bob De Niro, who considered himself a great writer. And the, the letters from prison would be along the lines of, never fear, I'm going to be winning the Nobel Prize in the next two years. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Nick ended up meeting and forming a relationship with his dad uh, after not having seen him for 18 years at a homeless shelter where Nick was working. And at the point in his life where Nick was working at this homeless shelter, it's really what he needed was to be in an extreme sort of setting where his own issues could be set aside. And uh, it, it was something that really helped him was working at this place. Um, but then his dad showed up and kind of destabilized his life. Um, and uh, this idea of a story about two guys who are, end up both being writers, one successful and unsuccessful, I mean, who are battling over who's in control of the relationship and the story uh, was what stuck with me. Thanks. I spent a heck of a lot of time with Nick, uh, whose memoir it is, and luckily he has a great sense of humor. He's married to the actress Lily Taylor, so he knows how weird the film business can be. Um, and over the course of the seven years I was writing the drafts, I would say to him, look, I'm really going to make this film. <laughs> Part of me felt I was lying. Um, because logically, you know, I was just going to continue over the next seven years to write 30 more drafts. Um, and in some way, I would have been happy with that because I'd never be confronted with whether I'd made the best version of it. Um, I spent a ton of time with him. We spent time at the shelter where he worked, um, and it could have reconfirmed some things I'd felt from uh, having known a couple of people who were homeless when I was younger, um, which is that everybody has their own unique story basically going into it. It's just this pressure cooker of people who are in an extreme situation in their lives, but they've all come to it from a different route. And I think there's a big tendency to look at it as, as um, a faceless uh, issue. Um, and I don't know how to look at things from an issue perspective. Nick does. He's much more versed in the politics of it. For me, I'm just interested in the fact that this guy who considers himself great is brought face to face with his own lack of greatness, but overcomes the situation by his belief in himself. And Nick, I know, feels that his dad's ego, while it's kind of extreme, is what helped him not become institutionalized and not die on the street. The weird thing is, the guy in real life, you know, he never did publish his book, but he had a very well-respected book written about him, and now he's had a film made about him where he's played by Robert De Niro. <laughs> so to some degree, he's right. <laughs> um, he was destined for greatness. It's just not in the way that, that he thought. I always thought you'd end up a writer like your old man. Actually, I do write. Uh, you know, sometimes I try. Well, there's no such thing as trying to write. One writes or one doesn't. And you have to take every opportunity to practice your craft. Anyway, I know you've inherited some writing talent from me because I am a truly great writer. I'm a writer, and I've been lucky enough to get to direct. Um, but one always wonders how much ego should be involved in writing. And for me, um, the answer is none. You need utter humility before what you're doing. If you think you're a great writer or you think that the piece you're writing has to be great, I think you're dead. <laughs> um, and so this idea of uh, De Niro's character being a guy who considers himself great but never publishes anything and um, ends up sort of destroying himself and this, uh, his son who ends up learning how to be a writer during the course of this um, and how to have sort of a dignity in his work life um, was, was really central. There are some lengthy, <laughs> some parts where De Niro's character is really kind of rambling um, because he's drunk. And uh, in the script, I'd say Jonathan rants. That would be it. But he has to rant something. <laughs> so uh, Nick uh, and I worked on sort of long monologues for De Niro to memorize. And we'd give them to Bob. And, and then I'd say to Bob, OK, we're shooting this in a couple of days only about a quarter of this is gonna end up in the film. Do you want me to tell you what I think is gonna be there? 
but he had worked so hard on memorizing these sort of like uh, non sequitur ramblings that he in, invariably said, no, 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 let me do it, let me do it as scripted, you use what you want, but, but just let me try it and see what you, you know, what we think of it. Um, so it, it is an articulate guy um, of a type that you don't encounter too often. De Niro did go with Paul, with uh, Nick and I to go meet his dad. Um, and his dad was so full of himself uh, that he wasn't in, at all intimidated by being Robert De Niro. And when Bob sat down, he said, do you think you're gonna be able to pull off playing me? <laughs> um, and Nick said, well, dad, you know, he's been in The Godfather, Raging Bull, he's done a lot of really great stuff. And his dad said, yeah, yeah, I hear you good, but can you pull this off? Um, and it was kind of, I think, license for Bob to go in that direction with the character. Um, he's a really colorful guy and kind of scary too. Pleasure to see you, Nicholas, aside from the circumstances. Uh, what are the circumstances? The circumstances are that I had a disagreement with my scum-sucking landlord. I don't know why. And so he decided to bring the police into the discussion, and so now I'm forced to move. Uh, move where? Oh, I, considering my options, I'm a sought-after house guest. You know why? No. Because I am an excellent raconteur. What's special about Paul is, uh, aside from his prodigious talent, is that he acts with a chip on his shoulder. And this character, his son, <laughs> on some level uh, comes to peace with his dad, but also hates his dad um, because his dad abandoned him. Um, and I knew that Paul had held his own opposite Dan Lee Lewis in a couple of movies, and so I felt like he'd be able to press Bob. At the same time, I'm not really keen to have somebody who's being a jerk to Robert De Niro off, off screen. <laughs> uh, and Paul's a smart and respectful guy um, and thoughtful. And so that was a great combination for me. Somebody who, when the camera was rolling, was going to mess with <laughs> De Niro. And uh, when the camera wasn't rolling, was a good guy.